In this episode, I'm going to show you some fundamentals of off-camera flash. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography. I'm Mark Wallace in Perth, Australia, in an awesome place called Mercado 32, owned by Katie. Now, Katie, you might recognize her because she's a model I've known for at least 10 years, and she was originally a friend of mine in Phoenix, Arizona, and now she's in Australia. And so she actually has an awesome tiny studio in her store, and so over the next four episodes, I'm going to be teaching you some fundamentals of off-camera flash in this studio. Now, we're doing that on purpose for a few reasons. Number one, is to show you that you can do this stuff anywhere. You don't have to have a really fancy huge studio to do this. And secondly, to illustrate that this isn't really rocket science. If you learn this, it can revolutionize the way you use your flash, but it's not really hard to learn it. So the first thing we need to do is learn about the language of light. We need to learn how to describe it and how it behaves. So let's do that right now. There are lots of words that photographers use to describe light. Let's start by talking about two of the most common terms in studio lighting, hard light and soft light. The best way to tell if light is hard or soft is by looking at the shadows it casts. Hard light casts a very clearly defined shadow. Its edges are hard. Soft light casts a shadow that's hard to tell where it starts and stops. Its edges are soft. On a day where the sky is clear, the sun will throw a concentrated beam of light that will produce deep, sharp shadows on the subject. This is hard light. But if the clouds come out, then the light becomes diffused. Instead of the light traveling in the same direction, it is cast in different directions and the source of the light becomes much larger. A larger light source will throw a wider beam of light with shadows that are more open because light is bouncing around and spilling into the shadows. This is soft light. An important term is effective size. The effective size of a light is based both on the physical size of the light and its position in relation to the subject. In other words, the closer a light is to the subject, the larger its effective size and the softer the light will be. The farther away a light is from the subject, the smaller the effective size and the harder the light will be. To illustrate this point, let's look at the sun. Although the sun is 100 times the width of the earth, it looks like a tiny speck in the sky. That's because it's 93 million miles from the earth. This makes the sun's effective size very small and therefore it gives off very hard light. Now, if we were able to move the sun very close to the earth, its effective size would be much larger and the light it casts would be much softer. We can change the quality of light by changing the effective size of our light source. Since moving the sun closer to the earth would be impossible and a really bad idea, there is another way to modify our light source we can use modifiers. Now let's bring back the clouds. In this scenario, the sun would be the light source and the clouds would be a light modifier. The sun lights up the clouds and the clouds become a huge light over the earth. Now our illumination is the entire sky, not just the tiny dot of the sun. The effective size of the light is much larger and the light is much softer. Sometimes soft light is called diffused light and hard light is called harsh light. Contrast is the difference between the darkest and lightest areas in an image. The greater the difference, the higher the contrast. In much the same way, you can change how hard or soft a light is by moving a light closer or farther from the subject. You can also change the contrast of your image by changing the position of the light. When you position the light in front of your subject, you'll get a low contrast lighting. If you move your light to the side of the subject, you'll get a much higher contrast lighting. All right, I promise not to catch you on fire, but over the next few episodes, we're gonna put those fundamentals into practice, so make sure you don't miss it. Thanks for joining us, and I will see you again next time.